The following is a selected video from masterthecontent.com where you will find an extensive video library of lectures for a variety of standardized admission tests. We offer over 600 hours of detailed video lectures for a multitude of standardized tests. Use our interactive in-lecture table of contents to find specific topics of interest. Work through numerous in-lecture examples to help you internalize concepts. To learn more, visit masterthecontent.com. Your career, our passion. And what we're going to talk about on this slide is gene splicing. Okay, we're talking about gene splicing. Now, eukaryotic genes, genes are often interrupted by what, by what we call non-coding sequences. So let's define what we mean by a non-coding sequence. Now, segments of DNA within a gene, because remember, a gene is just basically a sequence of nucleotides along a DNA molecule. So segments of DNA within a gene that are not expressed in the final gene product are called introns. That's what we call an intron. So you can think of an intron as a non-coding segment of DNA. So that segment of DNA will be transcribed to form mRNA, but it will not be expressed in the final protein product, in the final gene product. That's an intron. It's a non-coding segment of DNA, of a gene, of a gene uh, in DNA. Now, portions or segments of the DNA that are actually expressed in the final gene product are called exons. So you can think of exons as the coding sequences or those sequences that are actually expressed. So what this tells you is that in the length of a gene, so say over 100 or 200 nucleotides long, not every single uh, one of those nucleotides will have a say in the final amino acid chain that is produced. Some of those nucleotide sequences in the chain are actually useless. They're non-coding. So they have to be removed uh, from the mRNA. And that's what we call gene splicing. Okay? It's a removal of non-coding se sequences or segments uh, that we call introns. It's a removal or the removal from mRNA. So this is part of maturation. This is another uh, step that mRNA has to go through before it's actually a finished product and can be used in translation. So um, how does gene splicing actually occur? So we have proteins that we call um, SNRNP, SNRNPs. So what that abbreviation stands for is small nuclear ribonuclear proteins, somewhat of a complex word. Now, what these proteins do is that they recognize splice sites in RNA, and they aggregate with additional proteins to form what is a spliceosome. Okay, so a spliceosome is a large complex structure that is formed by the aggregation of small nuclear ribonuclear proteins. The actual segment of uh, RNA that is to be processed, the intron, as well as other additional proteins such as ribozymes and small nuclear ribonucleic acid, all of which are involved in the process. So what happens uh, in a spliceosome is that a series of tightly controlled enzymatic reactions will occur to splice out or to cut out these introns from mRNA. Remember that if a gene directs the synthesis of mRNA, that means all those introns that were in that gene and the nucleotide sequence of that DNA, all those introns are transferred to mRNA. So we have to process that mRNA to remove those non-coding segments, those introns. We have to splice them out to make mature mRNA that is then ready to perform its function. Now, gene splicing has a very important evolutionary significance. One of them is that a single gene can actually end up encoding more than one protein, more than one protein, depending on what splice patterns are used. Okay, so what happens in this case is that you can splice mRNA differently to create different gene products. So one gene can actually result in different proteins depending on how you splice that mRNA product. Now, the presence of introns actually has a also has another evolutionary low, role. It's thought to be beneficial in the formation or the, in the evolution of new proteins in the process we call exon shuffling. So remember what an exon is, it's a coding segment. So sometimes those exons can get shuffled in the processing of um, mRNA. You know, the order can be scrambled or changed around, which can result in the formation of new novel proteins that might be beneficial uh, to the evolutionary survival of an organism. So gene splicing has a very important role to play 
as far as gene expression is concerned. Now, the movement of mRNA from the nucleus of a eukaryotic cell is highly selective. It's a highly controlled process, and it's controlled by a structure we call the nucleopore complex. Remember, the nuclear envelope which encloses uh, the, gene genetic the genetic material in a eukaryotic cell has small holes in it, small structures, small pores that we call nucleopore complexes. Now, those pore complexes are actually responsible for recognizing and exporting only RNAs that are mature. So, what is a pore complex going to check mRNA for? It's going to check mRNA for a 5' prime cap. It's going to check mRNA for a poly A tail, a polyadenylation tail. And it's also going to check uh, mRNA to make sure that the introns have been removed or excised uh, to make sure that it's actually ready for translation. So a host of different uh, molecular mechanisms and markers have been developed or that have evolved over time to ensure that this process happens smoothly and perfectly uh, nearly every single time. So what we have on the next slide here 